The world of Arda, and its more well-known continent of Middle-earth, is one of the most famous fantasy settings of all time. Yet what many people don't realise is that Arda isn't as fantastical as it comes across. In fact, Tolkien intended Arda to be a mythological history of our own world, Earth. In this video, I want to shed some light on the background mythology of Middle-earth, and how it connects to our own world. If you're reasonably familiar with Middle-earth, you might have heard the phrase, Tolkien intended for Lord of the Rings to be a mythology for England. So is this statement true? Well, sort of, but it's also much more complicated than that. I want to keep things relatively short and simple. Early in his life, Tolkien lamented that much of the ancient mythologies and traditions of the Anglo-Saxon people had been lost to the ravages of time. Although Tolkien is never quoted directly as saying that he wished to create mythology for England, he does imply it on several occasions, and it's generally agreed upon that it drove a lot of his earlier work. And it's not hard to miss. In Tolkien's earliest work, compiled in books such as The Book of Lost Tales 1 and 2, and The Lost Road, we get stories directly involving Anglo-Saxon England. The most notable of these stories is that which speaks of Ereol, a Dane who ends up sailing to the island that would eventually be known as Tol Eresi in the 5th century AD, a place where he would meet fair creatures that were undoubtedly the earliest version of elves. This story would evolve and Ariel would eventually become Aelfwine, an Anglo-Saxon man of the 9th century AD. While in Tol Eresi, Aelfwine would learn the works that would come to be featured in the Silmarillion, such as the Children of Huron. These stories would return to England with Aelfwine, and a thousand years later, Tolkien would translate them. Basically, an elaborate framing device. However, the scope of Tolkien's work quickly evolved beyond establishing a connection between Anglo-Saxon England and some mythical past or land. Although he never states that he abandoned the idea, it's clear that it became far less important. Even from the very beginning, Tolkien was borrowing heavily from Norse, Celtic, Finnish and even Semitic influences. But while the link between Anglo-Saxon England and Arda was a concept that was frozen in time in the 1920s, Tolkien still made one thing very clear. Arda was Earth, and Earth was Arda. We have from Tolkien various letters that detail and cement this concept. The first letter, 165, was written to the Houghton Mifflin Company in 1955, and the second, Tolkien's notes on W. H. Alden's review of Return of the King, written in 1956. Middle-earth, by the way, is not a name of a never-never land without relation to the world we live in, and though I have not attempted to relate the shape of the mountains and land masses to what geologists may say or surmise about the nearer past, imaginatively this history is supposed to take place in a period of the actual old world of this planet. I am historically minded. Middle-earth is not an imaginary world. The theatre of my tale is this earth, the one in which we now live but the historical period is imaginary. The essentials of that abiding place are all there, at any rate for the inhabitants of Northwest Europe, so naturally it feels familiar, even if a little glorified by the enchantment of distance in time. The connection between Arda and Earth becomes a lot clearer when you look at a map of Arda in the Third Age, although it should be said that while this map is good, it's not entirely accurate. As you can see, the continent of Middle-earth roughly lines up with the three continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa. The mysterious dark land could be adjoining of Australia and Antarctica, and the new lands that are created after the Second Age are meant to be the Americas, although we have no idea what they looked like. That being said, this was largely coincidental, and although Tolkien undoubtedly created the Westlands of Middle-earth with Europe in mind, he did not go out of his way to match up any geographical features between Arda and our own Earth. In that sense, the Westlands are inspired by Europe, but isn't necessarily Europe, with the exception of the Shire, which is specifically stated to have been in the lands that would become Europe. In Letter 169, written to Hugh Brogan in 1955, Tolkien states this. As for the shape of the world of the Third Age, I am afraid that was devised dramatically rather than geologically, or paleontologically. I do sometimes wish that I had made some sort of agreement between the imaginations or theories of the geologists and my map a little more possible, but that would only have made more trouble with human history. 
In other words, the map was created with the story in mind, not the connection to Earth, and making the map more Earth-like would have only complicated things. But even though Tolkien did not create the map with the intention of it resembling Europe and Earth, he did use Europe as a reference. In Letter 294, written to Charlotte and Dennis Plimmer in 1967, Tolkien writes this. The action of the story takes place in the northwest of Middle-earth, equivalent in latitude to the coastlands of Europe and the north shores of the Mediterranean, if Hobbiton and Rivendell are taken, as intended, to be at about the latitude of Oxford, then Minas Tirith, 600 miles south, is at about the latitude of Florence. The mouths of Anduin and the ancient city of Pelagir are at about the latitude of ancient Troy. So, Arda is Earth, Middle-earth is roughly the old world of Europe, Asia and Africa, and the westlands of Middle-earth are roughly Europe. Another thing you might have heard a lot is that the Shire is rural England, and this is something Tolkien spoke about at length. While Tolkien did state that the lands of the Shire were located in what is now modern Europe, he never said that the Shire was England. He did, however, in both letters, 230 and 235, state that the Shire was based on a Warwickshire village in the year 1897, and again in letter 250, he stated that it was based upon rural England. It should be noted that in Tolkien's earliest works, Tol Eresi off the coast of Amman was England. That almost certainly changed. I also want to talk about languages, because one question might be, if the Shire is not England, why do they mainly use English names? The answer is quite simple. Remember the framing device for Tolkien's work, that Tolkien was not the author. The authors are instead in-universe characters such as Pangalod, Dirhaval, Bilbo and Frodo. Tolkien was merely the translator. Well, the Hobbits do not speak English. They speak the common tongue, or Westron, which has been translated to English along with their names. One example being, Maria Doc Brandybuck is actually Kalimak Brandegamba. Likewise, the Rohirrim are not Anglo-Saxon. Their names are translated to Anglo-Saxon by Tolkien, who needed a language similar to English, but not quite English, highlighting the connection between the languages of the Rohirrim and the Hobbits. Alright, so if Middle-earth is just a mythological version of Earth's past, then how far back did Tolkien envision it? He answers this in a footnote in the aforementioned Letter 283. I imagine the gap to be about 6,000 years. That is, we are now at the end of the Fifth Age, if the ages were of about the same length as the Second Age and the Third Age. But they have, I think, quickened, and I imagine we are actually at the end of the Sixth Age, or in the Seventh. When Tolkien speaks of the gap, he speaks of the time between the fall of Barad-dûr and our modern era. Of course, the gap being only 6,000 years shows that he didn't put a huge amount of effort into trying to make the connection between our world and Middle-earth bulletproof. Obviously, 6,000 years ago is part of recorded history. It's the beginning of the Bronze Age that featured ancient civilizations such as Egypt and Sumer. There's no Middle-earth. So while Arda was supposed to be a version of our own Earth in the distant past, the connection is rather vague and Tolkien did not take the time to seamlessly fit it into our own history and the geography of our world, hence the heavy use of the word mythological. Still, it does make for some fun trivia that creatures like elves, dwarves, dragons appear in the myths and legends of various civilizations because they lasted long enough to be witnessed in the modern human era. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. If you want more videos about the creative process behind Arda or some of the background of it, Please let me know. Cheers, farewell, and remember, sometimes writing this stupid little joke bit at the end of every episode is actually the hardest part of the script to write.